Hey everybody, Wendy Klinky with Blue Cat Studio. I am attempting to go live between both Facebook and Instagram. So bear with me as I get everything kind of sorted out. Sometimes being on a gajillion different cameras is a little bit crazy. Anyway, tonight we are going to be painting the chinoise, chinoise really chic uh, vase with the cherry blossoms. So let's go ahead and get started real quick because, you know, no talk, all do. Make sure that you've got your 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 painting surface. I'm using watercolor paint. And I'm going to start us off with a large one inch flat brush. So again, kind of showing all the various cameras and we'll begin on our palette with some of that pool or light blue and also have some of that mermaid or dark teal, mermaid tail, dark teal on your palette so you're ready to rock and roll. And so we'll begin just kind of framing out kind of at the top here. And so Oh yeah, you all got it. I don't have to explain where the top and the bottom is. It's what you see. So just kind of getting some blue there, maybe getting out to the edges with this pale color. Roll up your sleeves, make sure your workspace is all protected. Get a little bit further down. So I'm trying to keep some of the blue tones in this picture up above where I think the base is going to be, kind of where the blossoms are, because we want to make sure that we're creating some good contrast and background colors for the various colors we're using in the painting, which is why this sort of graded look works so well. From here, don't even bother rinsing the brush. Go right into that mermaid tail or dark teal, whatever you want to call it. And don't forget to say hi as you pop on. Um, I am using a, um, an app called StreamYard if you're on Facebook and you just need to kind of click the link so it tells me your name. Otherwise, I see Facebook user. And um, hello in Instagram land. Thank you for joining. All right. Here we go. Here we go. So I think that's going to be good for the mermaid tail. I'm not super, you know, thinking about blending. In fact, maybe I'll make it slightly messier. Add some of that there. I'm going to offload the brush and you just crack the sucker open. Sorry. I usually like to just pick an empty page in my journal and just brush the extra excess paint off. Yeah, okay, nothing special there. Before I rinse. Otherwise, my rinse water gets super gross by the end of the night or gross before the end of the night. And now you can go ahead and rinse. I realize that's a couple extra steps, but again, I don't get to get up and change out my water, so I got to preserve it somehow. A little bit. Make sure you've got a paper towel, dry it off. Another accessory you might want to think about having on hand if you don't have it already is a hairdryer. It's going to help us move through this. Grab your quinacridone, magenta, or whatever sort of brightest, craziest, loudest pink color you've got. Squeeze a little bit of that. Looking at my thing thinking, yeah, that'll be good. We'll do that. I'm just going to go to town right in here. So without, before I go into much overlapping on that teal, I'm going to try to get a base coating below it because there will be some kind of blending and color combo, but I don't want to drag that teal tone. This I need to roll up my sleeve. Well, maybe we'll just give up this shirt to, to the paint gods. I'm not sure. And then, you know, we'll start a little bit of overlap and check this out. I think that is the coolest thing like this insane and on camera, it's looking very red, but in the real world, this is like deep screaming magenta. Anyway, combined with the teal, it makes this really beautiful, deep violet purple color, which is kind of the exact purple that I asked you to get in your dioxazine. So in case you ever don't have purple or can't find it, magenta and teal make deep violet. Who knew? Okay, and then from here I was, actually I have my, my stuff a little reversed. Just for fun, I'm gonna grab some orange and do a little bit of orange at the bottom. And I'm not rinsing my brush, I'm just gonna grab that magenta, just kind of work it. Now because we've got oranges down here, I definitely see this orangey magenta as a base coat because oranges aren't going to show up so well. Grabbing a little bit more magenta, kind of kind of second coat some of that. Oranges aren't going to show up so well against orange. Great. Duh. Okay. 
freshen ourselves here. And let's use our hairdryer real quick to set this color. And if yours isn't like looking all perfect and blended, who cares? We're going for stripey. We're just slapping color on right now. And it's just a quick set. You just want to really kind of get it all dried out so that you can quickly add that next layer. All right. That was easy, right? And since I'm here, I'm going to grab the last of the magenta on my uh, palette and just do a little streak kind of right in here and just, you know, add some, add some color spots on my, on my thing because I can. The beauty of all this is we're really just almost creating like an abstract background. So go ahead and offload the paint from your paintbrush onto a piece of scratch paper. I mean, tell me that's almost kind of pretty, right? You know I'm going to use that at some point just by adding more and more paint to it. In fact, that's how like half of this like design style came came to be in the first place. Whoops, what I do? Okay, there we go. Rinsing your brush, and we are kind of cooking along here, right? Because I know that we've got about an hour and a half together, and I want to make sure we get through this entire design. Now, did you guys all get to your dollar store or whatever to find some stencils? or other, you know, stuff with texture, because we're gonna need it. And if you don't, we've got a few extra tricks up our sleeves. And just like yesterday, we did some bubble wrap and that was kind of awesome. Let's go ahead and grab a little bit of the sour apple or bright green. I think I suggested this, if not, if you don't have just kind of like an apple-y green color like this, um, but you do happen to have the chartreuse or citrus yellow. You see the difference there? You can always mix this guy, the citrus or chartreuse, with your dark teal, and you will get a gorgeous, gorgeous green. I'll tell you, I do my best to kind of recreate what we you know. What colors do we use? Sometimes I, I blow a little mental gasket and add an extra color to the list or forget one, so I apologize. Luckily, most of these are fairly mixable. And I'm just going to add, you know, some green in here, little bits, a couple of spots, just kind of having fun. You know, our real goal here is to create just some pattern and, well, not pattern, some, some interest, some color, some splashes, something that just keeps it interesting, I guess, right? Hi, Holly. See you. Holly joined us on StreamYard to say hello. Now, I know only a few of you who are actually out there comment, so I don't know you're there and watching unless you say hi. And I'm so, so proud of all of you who joined me yesterday. You put, Many of you posted your pics in the group, and they are so gorgeous. And I absolutely love seeing your finished work. And while, you know, it may not look exactly like mine, and of course it never will, not even mine looks exactly like mine. Um, it's just so beautiful to see your, your version of it, your interpretation, your sense of style, your sense of color. And really that's what this whole thing is about, is trying to inspire you to experiment and play and have fun with materials um, and take your sense of art to the next level. And so if you end up with the exact same thing as me, great. If yours is completely different, also cool. I bet you've learned something. All right, let's blow the sucker down. I mean, dry it. And right now I'm just kind of going after like the really wet looking spots. And luckily because this is watercolor paper, it's very absorbent. So it doesn't take too long to dry. Whereas canvas, that, that paint would be sitting there wet for a whole lot longer. Okay, next step. Let's find something to stencil with, right? So if you have stencils, awesome. I found some funky butterflies at the, can you see that okay? Butterflies at the dollar store the other day. I thought they were cheesy, but I actually applied some last night after I went off air. I was like, oh my gosh, these are fun. Um, I found some birds. All right, so here, here's a good one, because you know, we like to make stuff. So first and foremost, let's get a little gesso. Gesso. 
which is a, a white primer. This is what they prime canvases with if you buy them. Well, yeah, they prime canvases with this. We use a lot of gesso. Okay, so call me crazy. But here, we're gonna make our own stamp. Look, I got a plate from lunch. I have some bok choy. It's not a cooking show. All right, I guess that'll do to dry it off a little. But I just cut, I just cut it. Do you see there's kind of a shape in there? So we're gonna try and see what this does. Dab some of the, some of the moisture out of it. And I didn't wanna like pre-cut it so you guys would like not believe me. All right, let's see how this goes. Taking that brush, spread, so I'm spreading the gesso out a bit so that it's not super thick and gooky. Because if you're gonna make something with a stamp, you need to make sure there's still some gaps. I have no idea if this is gonna work. Sometimes like, well, the bok choy is a little bit weird, but I've done this with like romaine and it creates really cool shapes. So here we go, we're doing slight, slightly weird. Uh, Janine, yeah, there is, there is a traceable for today's lesson. I posted it under guides in the group um, under day two, Tuesday. you will probably be able to get away with freehanding it if you need to. Um, I'm definitely gonna talk us through a lot of it. Okay, so this is sort of sort of odd looking, but hey, we've got some shapes. And Janine, I think you already joined the group, right? Um, if not, unfortunately, I, I'm, I'm all by myself here and the only admin, and so I can't pop into the group right now. Um, but you can probably get through most of this. Okay, so this shape is a little bit weird. It's, yeah, whatever, I'm gonna throw it away. Ugh. Grab myself a paper towel since I used it in the last one. And now let's see what else we have for patterns. I'm really loving the bubble wrap, so I'm gonna go for some more of that. I think the bubble wrap does kind of amazing things. So shifting the thing out of the way, let's paint some bubble wrap. I'm just gonna do like a long stripe and then maybe a little cross piece. All right. And you know, we're gonna be painting over most of these designs and patterns anyways, but they do add some interesting texture and sometimes little bits of them peek out. I can just kind of place it on, oh, I'm sorry, I'm totally off camera here. Place it on, pull it up, oh yeah. That came out pretty cool. So that one was really, uh, really, really painty. I guess thickly laid on, whatever I do. Okay, so I'm gonna paint some more here. Do a little sort of scribble bit. And there's no rhyme or reason to the shapes I'm doing or the patterns. Just kind of doing. Again, this is this is play, right? Oh cool. Now we got some interesting shapes. I'm gonna try and just kind of squeeze little extra bits of that paint in lighter amounts off along some of the sides. And I'll tell you, I really want to use my butterfly, but I feel like, well, you probably don't have a butterfly. Are you gonna feel like all weird about that? I don't know. But okay, look, we have some birds that I got from the dollar store. I think there were some words I had as well. Where's my words? Maybe I didn't bring them over. A big pile of tricks over here. Nope, oh, no words. Okay. This other thing too. Oh, oh, there they are. Okay, so here's another thing. You also, if you have like huge stencils, I've got this big one with stars, which if we wanted to throw a couple stars on somewhere, we could. Just with a really light, light brush, barely have any paint on. Just kind of go over a few spots. Here's a star. I'm like the queen of stencils. I got stencils, stencils everywhere. They only sort of show. It's not, not super exciting. I got some paisleys. We could throw on a paisley. You know, these are like the bigger designs. This guy here, pick something that's kind of smaller. I've never used this paisley stencil, so I'm hoping it's awesome. Paisley, I find, seems to be one of the hardest things to find stencils for. I don't know why. 
which just drives me crazy, but because I've been obsessed with having a paisley stencil. Bloop! That's all right. It's not the coolest thing. Maybe take this odd shape here. But again, we're still, we're just kind of making a background, like a, a space for more designs and delight to, oh crap, I can break this thing right out the gate, to occur. All right, it's official. The stencil is annoying. So what I'm finding is I was attempting to brush over this stencil and I ended up getting under bits and pieces. So sometimes your better bet when stenciling is to kind of pounce or even pound up and down with your brush. Also why I'm using one of my cheaper, crappier falling apart brushes instead of my nicer one. Because there are brushes for trashing and brush and smashing and brushes that are our nicer ones. Okay. So I've got a wild mishmash of stuff here. We'll put a butterfly just because. And chances are we won't even see that butterfly and he'll be completely painted over, but why not? It's perfect, like there's a butterfly size gap right there. So Instagram land, there's all the weirdness I've put on. Obviously, very little rhyme or reason, and most of this we won't see in the end product, but we put it on in some ways it helps loosen us up and you know, give us the mental, emotional wiggle room to keep going with this piece. I'm going to offload that paint on my prospectus, rinse my brush. Try to decide what do we want to do next? I think, I think we, yeah, I didn't do it on the original, but I think we kind of want to trace. I want to circle break out the handy dandy bottle and my hot pink. I'm going to let some of that hot pink mix with the gesso a little bit. I'm just going to do it with my fingers because, because I just rinsed my brush and then I'm going to go ahead and just kind of ring, ring that guy. Everybody can see that. Okay, good. Oh, I'm off camera. Bloop, bloop, bloop. Now that I've got that, go ahead and maybe just place a big ring right here. And pink, poop. I love that. Let me do another one. You can use a wine bottle, a water bottle. In fact, some of those water bottles have like, or like that little like plastic Coke bottles and soda bottles have like all the little um, dots on the bottom that almost look like a, a flower. Those make cool prints too. I do love the rings. And if you want different sizes, you know, if you have an empty wine bottle, you could use, or soda bottle, you could use the opening, or the mouth opening. Okay. Well, that's four. We need a fifth one, right? Because everybody likes the odd numbers, not even numbers. So again, if you're just joining us or haven't said hi yet, pop on, say hi. Let us know you're here. It's always fun when we're when we're a crowd. Okay, so now we've got a good base coat. Give it a quick blow dry. So this is just a regular hair dryer. It's the one I used to take to the gym, but I don't go to the gym anymore because I don't like to get sweaty. My pants want me to go to the gym, but whatever. And I've got it on high setting or high, high full heat. You could also use a heat gun, but I always worry about that. And I think I say as much most of the times that I do a tutorial. So there you go. All right. Now that we've gotten that part taken care of, you're going to pull out your traceable design. Again, those of you who are joining from Facebook or are part of the Facebook group, you're going to have access to this traceable design. The rest of you, um, you, can, you can grab it later or if you're catching the replay, uh, make sure that you've requested to access the Facebook group and you can get this. So there's two ways to, to transfer it. You can either scribble on the back with chalk, which we actually demonstrated that technique yesterday. 
So I have some chalk and you literally would kind of hold it up and figure out where the design is. Yeah, you can see that because I'm showing the back of the page. Oh, okay, Instagram land can't, but everybody else can. Sorry, Insta people. Now you can kind of see it there. Okay, so you could literally kind of scribble along where all those pieces are, right? Get it good and good and chalked up. I think today, if I can find it, because I thought I had it. I was going to, yeah, I'm going to try and see what happens if we use carbon paper. And so I'll place the carbon or graphite paper down and just kind of aligning and thinking about where I want to have this guy. And I think I want the vase sort of in this section over here. My horizon line is maybe here. That gives me plenty of space. Okay, so from here, you're going to grab a pencil or a stylus, whatever works for you. You're just going to start tracing. So for this particular one, I'm going to go with the basic outline of the vase. And yeah, I think that's about it. And the sticks and the oranges, but the rest of this, you know, it's going to get painted over anyway. So you might as well just make it easier on yourself and don't, don't get all crazy about tracing. So we got our oranges. And if there's anything, if you like, look at this vase and go, Wendy, you got it totally wonky. I don't like it, but fine, fix it. Or if you want it to look more like a traditional ginger jar instead of a coptic urn, that's fine too, whatever. And so just keep this on hand and I'll walk you through the design, the actual design and how to do the double happiness. So don't stress about it. And that's why for this one, the, de the printable design isn't quite as critical because here then you can just kind of almost draw like your very own, we call it black lightning because it just sort of looks like little lightning from, especially when you go over it with your paint pen. And feel free to ad lib, right? I mean, if you want more branches on your cherry blossom, go for it. These are just sort of the base pieces that we're putting down. Can I go all the way in here? I don't know. That's why I do this in pencil, so I can actually see what I've colored and what I haven't done. It's so like me to do half the thing and then like pull everything off and be like, oh crap, I missed like a whole portion of the design. Oops, it's all good. All right, does that make sense? You kind of got the whole tracing process. And then I'm thinking, we don't, I didn't put a horizon line on, but I'm going to draw one in right here. Because when I try to paint horizon lines, they always come out it's that ways. So if you want to add a horizon line, I did it right around, almost right at the top of the, of the, of the top orange. Um, it's just a smidge below. You can actually see it slightly under right there. Oh yeah, that came out okay. I can see it, which is all that matters, um, is that you can see yours. I can see mine. Yeah, on camera you can kind of see it. It's, it's there enough, right? Okay, so let's go ahead and get some paint going on here. I'm going to actually grab the white. So white paint, not gesso. Find yourself a little section, squeeze some out. And let's grab, I'm gonna work with this guy, which is a, is a half inch, um, half inch, Filbert, there you go, Filbert. I tell you, like I pretty much was in nearly eight hours worth of meetings today. Maybe it was only seven or seven and a half. And it was not just like sit there and listen, it was full talk. So if I have like occasionally I'm like missing my words and kind of like, you know, lose it. Now you know why. Okay. So instead of going pure white, I'm going to grab a touch, a very little touch of this turquoise here. And I'm going to grab a big hunk of white and I'm going to mix a pale, pale turquoise. It looks, you want it to look almost white, but not quite white. You can see that in Insta world right here. We're going to go ahead and just do that vase. Actually, I probably should have done a coat of gesso first, but whatever. All right, I'm going to keep going.
I'm getting real loose and liberal with this. Just grabbing, grabbing the turquoise, grabbing the white, mixing it, getting it laid in. And this is going to take a couple of coats. And why on earth, if it's a white base, are we making it turquoise? Because if you paint it all white, then it's going to be really hard to have a highlight. But if you paint it a very pale turquoise that almost looks like white, well, then you've just built in your shading. And then all you got to do is add highlights. So there, now you know why we did that weird thing. Same thing as like, you know, during Christmas time or winter time when we're painting snowmen, we never paint them pure white. We always add a bunch of other colors. Hello, Sea Glass Collections. Kind of makes me laugh. I'm like, I want to call you by your name, but I'm like, well, you're Sea Glass. Hi. Okay. So now we have that sort of pale turquoise vase, which is, again, I know I drew mine slightly, slightly lopsided. And the design traceable is also slightly lopsided. So I love you. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> um, thinking just a smidge of green as well. Actually, I'm going to grab some of these chartreuse citron. If you're just joining us and you want to do this, grab your paints and supplies. Um, I've also posted somewhere, actually all over the place, Facebook and the rest of the world and Instagram. I have posted a supply list so that you can be prepped. All right, so I'm taking just a smidge of that citron, kind of adding a little bit of, little bit of citron stripes right into the wet paint. And I'm not using too much, just a little, I kind of let it blend. Okay, I know that looks super weird, but we'll, we'll, we're, we're gonna we're, we're gonna pull it off. I promise. Let's blow dry it so that it dries. All right, that's good to go. And I got a lot of color on my brush to my head and just offload it onto a page of my scrap paper. And I think that's good. Gonna re re up on some white. Squeeze. All right, here we go. We're gonna do this thing. So now we're grabbing some white and we'll come in and kind of create some streaky stripes, streaky bits of white. With emphasis of white, I think maybe in the center. That's where we'll do our, our brightest spot is in the center. And it's just little tones of the um, chartreuse and everything else on the sides. And again, it, I know, it looks a little weird, but it's all gonna make sense once we get that, that color in. So. Just some blending. And if you need to put your fingers in it, do that. That's that's cool too. Yeah, okay, we're good. Instagram land, you can kind of see it happening there. And that's the beauty of doing of doing this kind of like art project, right? Is you're really um it, it goes in layers and it starts off kind of strange. So I'm going to offload a bunch of that, that sort of almost white paint from my brush. And we're going to let this somewhat dry naturally and grabbing the last bits of gesso on my palette and begin to fill in those oranges. And I know I got oranges on orange. I had this crazy whim while we were doing this. I already went off program, but it's fine because there's all kinds of other stuff and layers that we'll put on on top. Just kind of filling in the rough shapes of those. If you can preserve some of the separation between the shapes, you see how we kind of, how we, how you can still see the outlines just by me giving them a little bit of wiggle room. I would do that. 
and a little bit there. Okay, and then I'll, I'll hit the leaves as well, just because the leaves will happen 10 times better if they've got a base coat of something other than red. Okay, good enough. It doesn't have to be perfect. You just need the coverage. Now you can go ahead and if there's anything left on your brush, you know, smush it onto your scratch paper, rinse your brush, Towel. Examine your vase. Oh, you know what I did? I left a ridge of thick paint, and those ridges are always the last things to dry. So instead of running my brush over, I sort of run my finger over it and kind of thin it out. Oh, I, no! I just broke my brush. It's my favorite. Well, it was cheap. What do you want? you get for paying 30 cents for a brush. And go ahead and dry it. Just to make sure it's really dry. And so for the most part, you know, when we do tutorials like this, I'm not using super fancy high-end materials simply because I don't want this art to feel inaccessible. I don't want you to feel like you have to spend a million dollars and, you know, five, six, eight, ten bucks a tube of paint in order to do this. I want you to feel like it's perfectly okay to buy the two dollar bottle or the 50 to 85 cent bottle, right? I mean, these all work perfectly well. Um, yeah, although this color, well, you just need to get quinacridone. You need to get quinacridone. It is, well, if you like magenta, I'm magenta obsessed. Okay, I'm off my soapbox now, we're good. Okay, let's get some, let's get some detail on this guy and then we'll kind of move on to the other pieces. So, you know, I'm never satisfied with, with anything out of the bottle. So we'll go ahead and grab some blue. Oh wait, oh, this other blue, primary. Okay, so whatever whatever blue you have, um, I've got two here. You can see kind of the differences. It's, um, oh, there, there we are on camera. It's different for everybody. One is kind of a summer blue and the other one is called, is Decorat Americana Primary Blue. And the primary is actually pretty close. I think that's the one I suggested, but whatever, it's a cobalt color, right? That's pretty good. It's got a smidge of green in it. I always like to change the character of my colors a smidge, a little bit. So I'm going to also take a squeeze of purple, not too much. And I put them in there literally side by side. So they're like, they're touching each other because they're about to get married. And we're gonna work with a really tiny brush, a fine detail brush. So go ahead and pull out your detail fine liner. Eyeliner is a little teeny tiny thing right here, right? I don't like to mix with those bristles because that's just asking it to flare forever. So I'll use the tail of the brush to just kind of mix. Now that purple is very, very subtle, the change it makes. Um, but in my personal opinion, it just makes that makes it a little bit more of that deep ultramarine purpley delicious blue. Yeah, delicious blue. To me, it just richens it a bit. All right. So wipe that, wipe the tail of your brush off. If you don't wipe the tail of your brush off, you're all gonna get it on something, whether it's your clothes or your hands or go like this and get it on your face and no, you won't notice it and somebody's gonna laugh at you and blurry blurgity, you know the, you know the word, you know the drill. Okay. So I know I'm babbling like big time. We're gonna start working on the vase part. There's a lot going on there, right? A lot going on, but we totally got this. So we're going to start with a double happiness. And I'm going to, for those of you on camera, I apologize. I need to turn this sideways just so I can get to it. Oh, no, actually here, let me try. I'll do it diagonal so everybody gets a little. So um, actually, I'm going to do a couple of, couple of things here. First, we'll do a line like so. Yeah, let's let's get ourselves tuned up. We don't want to go straight to double happiness. We need to make sure we're comfortable with our with our fine line brush. We'll do a couple of stripes. 
Make sure you have a sense of how your brush works. The more you press down, the wider it gets. And I want to come around this guy and actually go in and then maybe fill in. Okay. Now I will create, let's see, a line here. All right, so that first one we did up here and filling in the circle was, you know, basically the opening. So we've decided that the potter who made this glazed the entire inside of the pot blue, right? Right, okay. Second line here. And if you run out of paint, obviously you've got to keep going and go back in. Oh no, I made a dot. I'm going to ignore it and try and play it off. I'm going to go ahead and fill that guy in now. That way when I tell you to fill it in, we're not all confused. I'm getting the wrong one. How are we doing? Is this fine liner working for you okay? You're kind of getting it figured out? It's a bit of work, isn't it? See, there's my mess up. And I'm not sure I can fix it, so I'm going to ignore it and just go with it and be like, it's a design feature. That's what I used to say in tech. It's a design feature. Yeah, okay. I'm going to give this one some wiggle room, right? We want, because we're actually going to do kind of a Greek key style shape. I think that's what it's called in this section here. So you want to make sure it's wide enough that you can actually get to it. All right, and add a little bit of blue at the base of this guy. I'm going to thicken, thicken this line a little bit. Hope I don't mess it up painting sideways. <laughs> okay. So we're still kind of warming up, but we're going to get into the details. I promise we'll do that. We'll do the double hopping in this in a second. Um, so here we're going to do kind of a, it's almost like it's kind of a curvy V, a curvy V zigzag, for lack of a better term. I don't know how to zoom you in on this. This is really, really fine line in here. So for my Facebook people, right, where's the camera? It's right here. Okay, there we go. So it's going to be kind of line, line. Oh, no, I made it too fat. That's okay. Doing the best I can at this crazy angle elevated, holding it up in the air. It's not how we normally paint. So a little bit of grace. Okay. So we created this kind of zigzag line where if I were to do this really large on my work surface, it goes like this, almost like kind of flattened waves. That's what we just did. Cool. All right. So the next one, I'm going to show you how it goes big because I think that's going to be easier. Lord help me. Give me a, give me, give me a moment to blue saw this one. This one always gets me every time. All right. <sighs> like, I don't know. So this one's where we go like mentally clockwise, counterclockwise, clockwise, counterclockwise, and um, it's good. So I will start right here and create a line. Cool. I'm going to create one here and up and connect, but make these a lot smaller, right? I'm showing you super big so you can see it. And this one's going to come this way, up, across, down, right? So it's almost kind of like a funny S, but now you're really going to repeat that pattern small like this. And then you're going to do it again. And then one more time. And if you need to practice as well, kind of like I just did, Please do. I know even when I was painting this for the first time and I was thinking about, okay, how do I explain this? Oof. 
my brain was like, girl, you are not going to get this one right. Okay, so here we go. We're going to do this. Draw the line. So we'll go from right to left, a half up. Go back on ourselves, left to right. All the way down. Boop. Right to left. Up. Uh, right to left. Down, although I cannot get a downstroke from there without smushing it, so I did it up. Across. Up halfway and back towards myself. Lather, rinse, repeat. I love the way this looks, but it's kind of making crazy. So hang in there, do your best, and if you're like, um, just no, then do something else, right? This is your design. Um, but you know, advertise it as, hey, here, here's this design. <laughs> so I want to make sure I'm teaching you how to do it. Oh, look at that. I can even incorporate my little messed up dot in there. Oh yeah, this is this is not my best my best job. I've done better on this one before. But it's okay. I don't care. The uniqueness makes it fun, right? So bump, bump. Bump, bump, bump. Good enough. That was good enough. That's all I got. Anybody else like ready to die on that one? Yeah, I know. Okay. <laughs> I came out really wonky too. Yes. Okay. Double happiness time. Let's do this. So you can find kind of find the middle. Here's the center section, and we're gonna kind of create it in this zone. So let's start with a line right here. Here's the main. Oops, here's our main guy. And if you get a slight curve in it, that just kind of goes, just a very slight curve that kind of echoes the, the curve of the base. Awesome, if not, or if also okay. And then one a little bit above it, like so, and not quite as wide. And not quite as, you know, it doesn't go the full length. You notice there's, it's kind of, Shorter, that's it, a shorter line. And then we'll kind of pick our center zone and then a little off from the center, we'll come up with a with a stick, for lack of a better term. So there's the first part of the double happiness. We got it. So there's a gap between the stripes and then the next piece. Okay, now we're gonna do two parallel open box rectangle things. So we'll get going about here. And you know, if you actually can write in this kind of script and I'm butchering this, my sincerest apologies. I just Googled this and kind of did my very best. You know, how to do a cool symbol on a ginger jar. Cause I have had a little bit of an obsession with blue and white porcelain recently. Okay, so then we're doing just another parallel line under that. And I did not give myself as much room as I ought to have. Now we're going to do two sets of double lines kind of like that, but you want them kind of centered near the middle of that little of those boxes. So Instagram land, you got that? See, there we go. Right now it reminds me of one of those Lego dudes um, from Ninjago, because, you know, mom life. Okay, and from here, we're gonna do two more of this style of parallel box. I did this fairly small. There's plenty of room to have gone larger if you wanted. Oh, it's a little wonky, but it's cool. We got it. It's good enough. Doesn't have to be perfect. Okay, next up are the swirls. Also a major weakness for me. Maybe I'll do better if I'm upside down. 
So let's see, this guy goes. So if I join it this way too. Okay, so we're going to do counterclockwise swirls. Are you with me? <laughs> All right, is it counterclockwise? Yeah. So we'll start over here. And we're going to kind of go around and make a big. Did I get that right? Yeah, I did. Okay. Swirl. Grab a little bit more ink, paint, whatever it is. Now, if you have a paint pen in this color, you could totally just use your paint pen. But again, I'm trying to keep your materials very doable. All right, coming right around, kissing kind of the edge. And then we'll continue that swirl all the way to the ring. Now we're going to reverse that. So if that one was counterclockwise for me, this next one will be clockwise. So starting kind of in over here. In fact, thinking of it that way helps, but I don't, you know, I struggle with my right and my left. The only way I know my left is because I'm wearing a watch on it. Otherwise, you know, they're all sort of these universal directions. Clockwise and counterclockwise make no sense to me intuitively until I start imagining arms and legs and whatever it is, hands of clocks. That's hands, that's the body part going around. And I guess if you grow up digital, then analog clocks don't mean a lick. Okay, so look at that. We got the two, the two swirls. And then we'll put a little circle here in the middle, just a small, simple circle for fun. Kind of fills a gap. All right, this next one, we will do a... I got to do that guy the other way. Okay. It's these other ones that got totally killed me. So next up we're going to do, um, where are we at? The sec these two sections right here. Oh, are we on camera? Yeah, we are. Okay. So it's going to go like, we'll start over here on the right and it's going to be counterclockwise. And then it'll loop de loop itself. So I go ready, start to swirl around and around. And then as it comes through more, more blue stuff comes down, I'm going to do a little, a little loop. Uh oh, I got it backwards. All right. Oh, where's it going? What am I going to do now? How did I get that wrong? Oh, it was supposed to go like that. Well, okay. We're changing it up then. And if you can do better than me, then please, by all means do. And so it's almost like from that loop, we're going to make an S with a loop, S with a swirl on the bottom. Yup. I messed up. It's cool. So if that one was <laughs> counterclockwise, this next one is clockwise. Okay, here we go. Ready? Uh, clockwise. All right, I'm good. Yes. Okay, good. Good. Yep. 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 You know, it's one thing to like do this just kind of like when you're ad libbing and having fun by yourself, but trying to explain it or even make them even and opposite. Let's hold on the ball game. Not my strong point. Okay, so it's gonna come out and then swirly swirl here. Boom. Anybody else ready to kill me? I'm ready to kill me though. That's not easy. So from here, just to kind of fill this in and give it a little bit more meat, juice, whatever. I'm gonna add kind of a partial circle there and then maybe fill it in a little bit inside it. And we'll do another one over here. Bigger circle. Half circle, obviously, because it's kind of bending around the the vase, the vase, if you're fancy. A vase, I'm not fancy. Maybe a little flower here by dabbing some just little blue dots kind of in a form of five, almost like a cherry blossom. It's kind of an ode to the rest of the painting. So one, two, three, 
four, five. Instagram land, did you get that? And it's okay if it's not either. It really is okay. Don't don't let perfection get in your way. Don't let perfection get in the way of the good. Now I've got a big old gap right here. So going to add another one of these small circles that kind of mirrors the one down here. And then I think right in this open gap area, another simple, simple, simple blue flower, five point flower. Bloop, 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 bloop. Okay. Now let's see here. We are going to turn all these swirlies into vines. Don't hate me. So continuing on with the blue, we're going to go ahead and add little dots. Just bump, bump, just kind of with the tip of your brush. Now, I'm not going for per perfect circles. I'm going for almost like just little kind of tick marks, little tiny leaves. And it's okay if you mess one or two of them up because what we're really going to see is these as as a whole entity as opposed to um, individual. And as long as it kind of works as, as a whole, then that's, that's all that matters. It's almost remind me of like fiddlehead ferns or something. Yeah. I don't know about you. My, my brush is getting a little gross. So, and I feel like I got a lot of paint kind of getting up in the metal part. So I'm going to give it a quick wipe down just to kind of clean it re re get those bristles together and grab grab more paint so sometimes when your brush gets overly saturated you know just wipe some of that paint off give yourself that slightly fresh start you don't have to rinse it um but just squeezing that paint off can give you a great little refresh boom, boom, boom. all right and then the outside i know are you dead are you done with the dots yet and the dots can be either directly across from each other, they can be slightly off, they can be helter-skelter, doesn't really matter. You're just placing dots, and if they happen to align, great. If they don't, they don't. Don't overthink it. Yeah. I want to be like looking up like, hey, how you doing? But I tell you, I got to just keep going on this, huh? Dot, 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 dot. Now, if you feel like it's getting super busy in the in the middle of this little curl and you feel like your leaves are all clashing, you know, skip a section if they're too close and just go, just do them in the open spots. It's one of those things that um, you know it's there because you did it, but someone who's looking at it won't necessarily notice. So I've got a spot right in here and right over here where it would be just too crowded. So Insta peeps, um, it's right, right in here where I have just single and then right on the sort of in that inner portion where I didn't do double sided. Now you see it cause I talked, talk, mentioned it, but you don't really see it if I don't mention it and your brain just sees all stuff. So we're playing with the brain and we're going to go with that. We'll move on to the next one. Just placing those leaves. So this can be, you know, a little tedious, a little, whatever. If you're like, Oh, I'm not feeling this right now. I need a quick break. Mm -hmm. Get up, get yourself a soda or a, a glass of wine or beer or whatever it is that floats your boat, some water, some tea, or just keep doing the, the crazy vines with us. Ah, did I mention I'm obsessed with this blue? I really like it. I was trying to buy paint in this color to do a piece of furniture. And then, where can I do the outside on this one? It's a little, a little full in it. Um, I ordered one batch and it came and I was like, ugh, so close, but it's not quite what I want. And then I finally found another brand and I was super excited because it has that just a little bit of like that purple tinge to it. It makes me so happy. All right, here we go, here we go. Powering through this thing.
So I'm determined that like all these designs and things that we're kind of doing here, I'm eventually going to take those same kinds of ideas and styles and literally do them on this bohemian piece of furniture. Or it's not bohemian yet, but my plan is to make it like super bohemian. Oh, why? But I'm really excited about that. Okay, so you can do a couple of the ticks on the, not the ticks, they're not ticks, they're leaf bits, vines on this guy. And I think I'm starting on the outside of the loops here and I'm just gonna do the outside. I'm not feeling it for the insides. These guys are a little bit small. Or rather, picking a side. Well, this one I'll do the outside. But like when it makes a loop, easier to just do the outside. And kind of ad lib it, make it work for you. Don't force stuff that's not working. Dotting and dotting and dotting and dotting. This guy's gonna come around, switch into the other guy. Boom, 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 boom. Get some on the outside here since there's kind of no inside outside. Almost there, guys. I swear. Well, at least on this part. On this part. And so now I'm hoping that, you know, when you look at your at your vase, you see white. I know when I look at it, I see white. When I look at mine, I see white. Even though when I look, look at it, there's green and blue and turquoise and all that stuff. But for the most part, it just kind of has that somewhat, you know, shaded, more rounded look. And again, this is, this one's kind of fun because it's a little bit, it's a little bit cartoony, sketchy. You know, we're not taking ourselves too seriously here. All right. So remember this design we did here, this right here, we're going to repeat that down here. Unless of course you feel like doing something else. If you want to do more of that Greek key, by all means go for it. I'm not here to torture you, but if you'd like to torture yourself, you know, it's on you. And if I'm just the only one who's completely spatially messed up, um, I'll accept that. And you're like, girl, this is so easy. Great. I don't think it is. Okay. So on these edges, I'm going to sort of pull some of the blue up to close it off. Okay, and as much as this does make it more cartoony, I'm going to kind of come around and give a little blue outline on the vase. In fact, I'm going slightly outside the vase on the background color with the blue so that I'm not losing any of my white space. And it blends a little bit better because it's picking up the other colors. i got to rotate this so I can get to it. So when you're doing an outline or a long sort of pull like this or line like this, you really want to make sure that you're pulling as opposed to pushing. Um, and it's it can be as small a stroke as you need it to be to maintain those lines. Ooh, I'm getting a little sloppy here. Oh, my brush is getting saturated, that's why. So it's okay to just make a little swoosh and lift up and then come back. Your line will break if you let it go for too long. Okay. All right, so there's our lovely wonkiness. It's lovely. Well, sweet, look at that. You just painted a vase. You can just add love the rest if you want. <laughs> Kidding. Well, but not, you know what I mean. Okay. Go ahead and get the, the, the stuff off your brush. Go ahead and rinse it. I'm going to let it take a quick break. Um, some slime. Well, yeah, no, this guy's going to be dead in a second. I'm going to have to switch brushes. Or do I have another one like that? We do. Yes. Let's go a little wiggle, too. Yeah, I don't know. Okay. So we're back. <laughs> we're back to our, our half-inch filbert brush, right? I'm going to go ahead and make some orange for this guy. And don't freak out. I know. It doesn't exactly go with the existing orange. It's fine. Oh, I got paint bookers on my paint. Shake it, right? Forget to shake your paint. Shake it, shake it, shake it, shake it, shake it. So if your paint's not dry, go ahead and just run a dryer on it. I think my blue's doing pretty good. I 
again because I'm on watercolor paper, which is kind of like a little sponge. So we'll begin with just plain old orange. This is Craft Smart. It's a Michaels brand. Technically, it's called Dark Orange, but whatever. Pick the orange that works for you. It's just plain orange. We'll go ahead and fill in the orange. I like the filbert because it really creates a nice round line when I'm trying to go around curve. I really like flat brushes. They just do the job so fast. And again, if you're still maintaining those kind of gaps with the paint, great. Mine are getting a little bit filled in, but it's all good. Okay, so base orange. I'm just going to get that little bit of second coat to make sure that's still wet. Is that my tummy rumbling? It is. So I'll get some tea here. So now let's do some interesting things with that orange. And again, don't freak out about the difference between this background and the orange. We're, we will address that, I promise. Stuff like that drives me bonkers. So I would never teach it if it taught me bonkers. Or I would never teach a thing wrong if it drove me bonkers. So I'm on my palette just going to you know, kind of rub a bit of the orange over here near the quinacridone. Grabbing some quinacridone, I'm going to rub it into the orange kind of tone it a little bit, warm it up. Probably looks a little bit more like red for you guys, but well, I think it'd be a difference. And come around and kind of get around the base of this guy here. I'm adding some curvature. Just kind of the base. And we'll do it on the next guy here. Now it really looks like it's background, gosh darn it. Stay with me, stay with me. And then a very teensy smidge, and if you need a smaller brush, that's fine. Just kind of, kind of along the outline there and slightly working its way up this final orange. Mandarin, it's a mandarin, not an orange. Or it's a tangerine, I love tangerines. Tangerine's one of my favorite colors. Now that we've got that, I'm gonna come in and grab some just straight up quinacridon without any extra orange. However, I'm also not not rinsing my brush, so it may still have some orange, and I'm gonna kind of strengthen the tone from the bottom there. Yeah, a little bit more here. How about that? Magenta oranges, almost like blood oranges. And then, all right. I'm gonna use the fine edge of this brush just because you know it's it's flat and it's got a nice edge. I'm gonna use that edge to my advantage and kind of help outline almost by directly placing up and down, almost stippling with that fine edge of the brush, just kind of the border there. And then since I don't really want it to be a a, a curvy line on the orange side of it versus the 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 crack side of it, so here's the crack. Oh yeah, there you go. And you can kind of line that orange as well with a tiny bit of the quinacridone. Maybe this guy here, just for fun and giggles. Getting there, right? So this is, this is a layering, you know, additive process. My lighting is a little bit strange. Catching glares and not necessarily seeing inconsistencies in my color. Coming along. Let me go ahead and offload. Wipe it off in my breath or my thing. Come in with a touch more orange. I know we already did the orange, but we just were kind of getting there. So now I'm going to come in with almost circular, soft, loose, circular strokes to blend between those two. And yeah, it's bringing whoops, a little bit more darkness up into that, into the fruit. And that's okay. So we're really trying to work with the wet paint. 
soft, very light strokes, and it wasn't a lot of paint I'm using, just a small, small amount. And then this one here, it really kind of was only sort of going to cooperate, and that's okay. He's a supporting character anyway, no biggie. So now you're getting... Oops. With these lines, you want to kind of follow these sort of curves of the oranges and make sure that I'm not creating unnecessary visual lumps with my shading. There we go. So it's still very rich, and yes, I know, we all get to this. I promise. Uh, okay, I'm going to offload some of that orange. And now we're going to grab, where'd it go? Yellow. Straight up bright yellow. It's the 50 cent bottle from Walmart or Michael's, whatever. Shake it. I don't remember which it was. Maybe Apple Barrel is Walmart, is Walmart and Crossmart of Michael. Whatever. This is the 50 cent, sometimes 85 cents bottle. And since you've still got a little bit of orange, you know, left on your bristles, Go ahead and just kind of work your brush into that paint so that it's not really yellow on your brush so much as just blending the yellow right into your brush. And we'll come in and kind of grab some of the top bits along here. So round circular strokes, a little bit of yellow along here. I'm going to grab a smidge more orange and do a little bit of blending in there. A little bit more orange. Kind of fun how that kind of evolves itself. I need to like get out here and look at it. Gosh, it looks like one of those 19, 1980s or 1970s trucker t-shirts or hats. Oh, there we are. I'm just grab a tiny bit more quick. I need to. I feel like I need to blend a little bit right in here. So I'm just trying to kind of find the middle zone in terms of. The quinacridone and the orange combo just soften that line. I'm trying to keep it from being too harsh, although even if it is a little bit harsh, you can almost just call it stylistic, right? Stylistic. Yeah, look at that. Okay. And so now those little highlights are yellow. Now these could just as easily be persimmons, like the Fuyu style, which by the way are one of my most favorite fruits. So if you ever want to like ingratiate yourself with me, just bring me Fuyu persimmon. Those are the kind that like are like like really firm and still sweet versus like the round shape ones that like have to be so squashy they're gross to be good. Just saying. <laughs> All right, let's go ahead and rinse your brush. Man, that's a pretty color. I really like that. Did I rinse this guy? I'm not killing my brush. I might know he's good. Okay. We're going to come back to that fine liner in a little while. So I think before we lose our um, our lines, because we're going to get playing with the background some more, let's go ahead and break out your black pen. Um, you can use either a fine line or a thick line. These are both happen to be Artistro brand. I like them because you can see through them. You can see if your stuff is mixed up or not. But again, you can use Posca or anything. I mean, and if you don't have any like this, if you've got a Sharpie, guess what? You're good. Just make sure your paint is dry. So the number one way to kill a Sharpie or a paint pen is to use it on wet paint. So let's go ahead and give them a shake. Shaka, shaka, shaka. And I think on this one, we're not using any white paint pen today. Although if you have one, as we start adding highlights, you can always use your paint pen instead of your brush so you're not like going crazy. So shake it, shake it, shake it, shake it, shake it, shake it, shake it. Okay, good. I'm going to go with a fat one. So now if you've never used it and you need to prime it, we talked about this a bit yesterday, but obviously we don't always have the same people on. Um, you go ahead and kind of press it in a few times, work it. Um, so when you're shaking the pen, always do it with a lid on because if it's somehow gotten itself really gooey, you could be splooshing like black paint pen paint everywhere and um, no one's going to like you for that. Um, also, 
it's often better to prime it on the lid. There's actually even a divot that's just kind of made for that, that allows you to be kind of gentle and delicate with it, as opposed to slamming it into your, your work surface. Okay, so I'm going with a fat pen just so you can kind of see, see my lines better, so I can see my lines. So we're just kind of starting with the base pieces. You want to make sure that they're coming right out of the middle of the vase, which with that dark blue and the black is hard to tell. So let's go. Here we go. It's time for some black lightning. And I'm just kind of, you know, ad lib in. You can add a few offshoots as you like. But remember to keep it kind of almost delicate and wispy. I somehow got to get to more branch over here. Let's see, that's guy number two. Yeah, he's good. Okay, then we'll do another one over here. Oh, went off program. No biggie. And here's another bit. I can't see my stuff. Hey, I'm feeling making myself feel old right now. What happened here? <gasps> okay. You can kind of see where we went with that, right? I just drew it on. And you know, you can make it thicker if you like. And if you don't have a paint pen, you can of course always do this with a brush. Um, it's just sometimes the brush can just take so long. And sometimes I don't want to say it feels tedious, but we've already done some Kind of well slightly tedious work with all this design here so hence the recommendation for the paint pen plus i don't know paint pens are fun paint pens are really fun right okay and i now we don't need to draw in the background we're good so while that is drying go ahead and break out some of this mermaid tail teal or your dark teal or whatever color it is right and I'm just going to stick with my with my half inch filbert rounded brush guy, right? Cuz it's going to give me pretty good control over over this. And um let's see. Come on, stuff. Going to start to fill in that line right there, the horizon line. And I'm going to be gentle as I kind of go around. Whoop. Not sure where the paint is on this guy. Sort of fill out around this guy here. I'm just going to try to respect a couple of my edges. And I'm not going for full thickness here, I'm just trying to really just sort of find some definition. So I'm even going to leave some gaps around this guy because, you know, why not? It looks cool. Because I can. See how it's very streaky on this side? That looks pretty dark on camera. Um, if to the naked eye, it's it's a whole lot brighter. But if it's not bright enough, I'll do more. I can jelly just second coat. So creating some kind of streaky lines, but then also being really respectful of the edges of my oranges. Oh, you can't really see that because my hand's in the way of the camera, at least for the Facebook folks. And so once I've got that outline, I can then kind of drag paint off of it so that it sort of appears. And you notice I'm really only worried about filling it in well and clean lines directly around the oranges or the fruit because that that's the part that needs to pop. And so notice I'm even leaving a little gap around this guy. I, you know, I'm, I might fill it in later. I don't know. I haven't really decided. But some streaky bits like that, perfectly acceptable, right? Because it just adds color. It makes it interesting. And because we can. Okay. Then from here, now that we've got this guy painted in, I might add little extra kind of line across here, maybe across here. 
you know, add some shapes and, and lines as you like. If you feel that you need more, more um, stencils, you can use them by all means. I think I want to add a touch of this um, chartreuse. Chartreuse, that's my word. This time, I'm going to offload some of that paint because I got a bunch up by the bristles getting saturated. I'm going to dip my, my brush in some water and then just kind of hit the rim of the thing so some of that water drips in. So it's a very wet brush. So this is the one time we're being intentional about water on our brush. I kind of pull it into the chartreuse to make a slight wash and notice I've still got all that mermaid teal in, so it's created a, a deeper richer green but it's going to be a wash so I can kind of come over and wash and what that does is it allows me to to tint some of my stencil slash prints if I don't want that screaming white to be there I can I can tweak it a little and now that we've gotten a lot of the water off, my brush is fairly dry. Um, I'm going to go in with some green. And I'm going to edge right along, right along this guy and then just kind of pull up. And allow parts of it to be streaky, but we want kind of a clean chartreuse line. Except, of course, around Mr. Mr. Orange here. I'm going to keep the paint fairly light around the orange because there's some leaves there that we're going to want to get. Fairly clean around my base. And then sort of pull up. This reminds me of like Northern Lights or something. This is also why we do the gesso because it really, it's, it's slightly absorbent, so it, it takes the paint nicely. Um, better than just plain white paint. So I feel like it allows us to achieve a much richer effect on the, in your art. When you, yeah. So I've just kind of pulled that up and you can you can do it however you like it, whether it's going way up high or just a little bit. It doesn't really matter. This is your piece. And if you're like, oh that chartreuse color is awful, I hate it. Okay. Can I use it? I don't care. It's your art, and you're the one who gotta live with it, right? I love chartreuse, by the way. Not sure I would ever wear it because you know my complexion, but I do think it's been a fun, it's been a fun color to to add into this. Now look at that. This is this is like wild and crazy and vibrant and woo. Makes me happy. Makes me happy. Color just does that to me. All right, so I'm gonna kind of offload some of my chartreuse throughout here as well. And because it's going over that teal, it's really just kind of more than anything, you know giving it a little bit more of a green tone and maybe adding some color to parts of my my prints. And yes, we're going right over the, the cherry blossom sticks and, or branches and that's okay. Oh, I'm going to snag some yellow and see what that does too. Because I had some, right? I don't even know if I used it in the, in the other one, but that's fine. All right. It's got still a lot going on, right? It's pretty busy. So if at any time or towards the end, if you feel like the colors are too intense, it is okay to do a very pale gesso wash to lighten some of this to give it more of a hazy color. Of course, you'll want to do that before you add the cherry blossoms. Let's go ahead and rinse the brush. And so we can go over the, 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 the branches again later, um, but if we had done all this, um, and the extra colors, we could have completely lost vision on where those branches were. So I always like to draw them in just so I, I remember what I'm working with here. And I see this section here is very dark and it's bothering me. So I'm gonna come over it with a bit of a little bit of quinacridone. Of course, now it just seems even darker, but whatever, it's cool. So a little quinacridone wash here. I don't know, because I can. Couple of white spots here. I'm gonna add a little of that quinacridone. 
Again, I'm just kind of grabbing like, hey, what's on my palette? Okay, and now the beautiful part is we can add a little shadow under the quin under the under the tangerines with a quinacridone directly on that turquoise. I can kind of see it. Shows it better from here. But it ends up looking like that deep um, violet purple, which is like the perfect shadow color. You can kind of see it. So maybe we'll grab some of the dioxazine purple again, just a little bit to keep going with it. So dioxazine purple. A little bit in this area, a little bit in this area. And come up, oop, that's wet. Right around the base. And so purple, because it's it's a complementary color to orange. Well, sort of. It's actually, perfect complement is yellow, but it's in the complementary range. It's going to create like a wonderful kind of shadow effect without having to use black because when you use black i think i mentioned this last night you really just end up kind of muddying your your colors and losing the the intensity and in my world intense color is is king all right now just for fun i'm going to stipple a tiny smidgy smidge of that purple in the very finest line kind of just differentiate a little bit around these oranges here and this guy's in front, so even just a little bit of purple and the very faintest, almost a wash, just kind of right in front of him. Adds a smidge of depth. See what we did there? We're not going for full realism here. We are messing around and having fun and playing with color and enjoying every minute of it, right? Right. Okay, good. I had some white zones here next to the base, and I didn't like that. So I'm lightly brushing some purple to fill in those whites, white spots, and it works. Okay. You know what we need? I want a little bit of this blue. So, so if you have any blue left over from the vase, get your brush wet when you place it in. I'm going to make just a slight kind of wash. I want, I don't want it full intensity going on, but I do want a little wash kind of right in a few spots. So I'm going to pick a few areas that are light-ish where that blue will kind of show. Maybe slightly framing a little bit. Can you see that? Yeah, I'm going to keep sneaking right off camera here. So if there are particular sections that you really like and want to preserve, preserve those. Um, I've gotten real dark right in here, so it's going to need a wash for that some of that stuff to show up. Yeah, I've gotten really dark. So it is hair dryer time. Let's do that thing. Let me get the excess off my brush. get some more gesso we're going to do a gesso wash a partial gesso wash so just pick any spot where you've got dry paint it's fine dip your brush in water my paint water is getting gross but it doesn't really matter and I'm just going to kind of drag some of this gesso off over here and it's it's pretty watery and we will do a little I'm going to kind of do some wash through here and don't feel like you have to do all of this right but if there's some areas where I feel like, you know, my, um, my sticks aren't going to show, then I'll maybe do a wash to kind of tone it. And if it's too much, I can kind of pat it to lift some of that color or even add a little bit of texture and almost wrinkles from the paper towel. Oh, I felt okay. And then I think we want just a smidge more in this zone. So I still have the undertones 
it's not quite as intense. Yeah, that's better right there. So I'm thinking about, okay, this base, I want it to pop a little bit. So some of these purples, which I like the colors, are causing the base to fade a bit into the background. So by adding some more white, it pops out a bit. And if I wanted, I could put some along here. It doesn't really matter. Just make sure that it's not getting onto your oranges. Just a tiny, tiny wash in this zone here. Yeah, there we go. Why? I don't know. Because we can. Because it keeps it interesting. All right. Good deal. So, yeah. We'll go ahead and get the blossoms in. If you feel good about the background, we'll add the blossoms. And then we will... Um, hey, Creative Spark Digital and Sabina. Thank you for joining us. All right. Let's do this. We're getting close and this is awesome. So we're gonna use our fine liner again. Go ahead and rinse your brush, your big fat brush that you were doing the wash with just to make sure. So for those of you joining us on Instagram, we're also streaming live on Facebook at uh, Blue Cat Studio Art, as well as in our private group. That way everybody gets to do the good stuff. So I'm going with hot pink, neon pink, because again, fluorescent, like that's, that's my world right there. Or some pink. This one's a deco art Americana. It's called sizzling pink because I guess, you know, they needed a special name for it. So I just put a little dot on my, on my palette. It's probably way too much paint, but that's fine. And let's see, I'm going to get a smidge more white paint because we're about to mix it up, right? You got to, so have your white and your pink right next to each other. Like so twin twins mode. See that right here. So you take the tail of your brush and you just kind of mix them together, but leave sections of white and sections of pink so you have a swirl. We have a purposeful swirl. Since I've got a little bit of stuff on the, on the tail of my brush, I'm going to go in and make a few dots to just kind of get rid of some of that paint. But, all right, that's good enough. We'll wipe it off. We're going to use the brush, the brush tip instead of the tail. So swirl it kind of somewhere in the middle of that pink. You're going to come in to the ends of your branches and start adding little dots, right? Dot, 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 space them out. So sometimes getting more in the white section and sometimes more in the hot pink. And you'll kind of get a mishmash mix. Should be interesting and fun. Kind of just follow it down. And think of it almost like making spaced out clusters of grapes, right? Clumps of, clumps of things. This is almost like a weeping cherry as opposed to a, um, a, a traditional cherry like you find down at the Tidal Basin here in DC. So again, grabbing bits of white, bits of pink, allowing them to intermix. So some dots can be multicolor, but it's also good to have a range of dots kind of amongst a range of colors amongst your dots. So anywhere you've got a little little twig or stick hanging down is a good is a good place to to do some of these. So I'm kind of doing the parts that are further away from me first. That way I can move across towards towards my writing hand um, and worry less about you know getting into my wet paint, which I'm the queen of sometimes. And we will draw those sticks back in again. And you can totally tweak and tune this as, you know, to your heart's desire. Get it kind of right, sort of right. So we've got like an elbow here. So I'm going to pretend there's a stick. Doesn't even have to draw one in. A little something here. As long as you can still see your branches, you're good. So I'm getting a profusion of just plain pink going on here. So I'm going to add a bit of white to kind of 
mix it up and keep it fresh. So just working your way across. Kind of willy nilly, dip, dip, dot, 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 dot. Having fun. Yeah, here in DC, they tend to grow in like these funny little poof ball things, which is also quite cute. I don't know that I'll get out to DC to see them because I believe today they're actually at their at their peak. I mean, it happened early. They thought it was going to be next week, but we've had such gorgeous hot weather. Which is weird for March, but I'll take it. When the sun comes back out, it just kind of just has that feeling of hope. All right, let's see where we at here. Got to rotate this thing a bit. Okay, I'm going to now come over here. And because I'm working on this sideways, um, I'm going to work over here and then work my way into this corner. For you, it might be easier to work sort of, you know, left to right and top to bottom. So each time you run out of, out of paint, and I'm not getting perfect circles here by any stretch, and I'm just kind of having blossomy bits. So last night we did the big zoom in on the single blossom. Today we're doing the sort of the macro picture versus micro. I don't know. Or am I thinking economics? It's all good. Oh, a couple here and by the vase, just dip, dip, dot. Oh, and since we're here, we we might as well get a little bit of a little bit of blossoms overlapping the vase on some of the sticks that are nice and close branches. I'm gonna say sticks because that's easier. Just figure out wherever you did your black lightning, wherever there's a tip. That's where you gotta have some flowers happening, right? And I don't know if I nailed my sticks or not today or my branches. I kind of was a little wild and crazy every which way. Just make it up as you go, right? This is the part where you can kind of be free and put stuff where, you, where you'd like to see it. Exactitude is not a thing. Not today. So again, continue just kind of dipping in the pinks, you know? And I'm getting, sometimes I'm getting like, bright pink. Sometimes I'm getting mostly white. Sometimes I'm getting a solid mix. And on my palette, I really tried to make sure I had like a whole, I still have a whole swirl. Where was I? Um, I guess here. Oh, and there's a little spot right here where I can do some blossoms. And this little spot here. around and add just a bit more and some zones over here. Okay, now here's the fun part, right? And it's one of those details that I really enjoy um, when doing one of these is, you know, you've always got the blossoms, but then when you go see cherry blossoms, what do they always do? They're always dropping. They're always dropping a couple. So have a few that just sort of start, that appear to be falling, maybe even one or two kind of sitting sitting on the on your surface just cuz you know you can and you know you can do way more you can pause whatever it doesn't matter you might pause just so that we can kind of keep keep going and wrap this up we're a little bit over but it is well, this detail here is a little bit complicated, right? Yeah. Hopefully you're not ready to kill me yet from this. Or needing like bifocals because at these moments we're like, I cannot see what I'm doing. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to keep going here. So I'm going to pause the flowers for a spell. Wipe off the excess paint. Rinse it. We'll get a couple of the last bits of detail here. 
So grabbing your dark green, forest green, dark hauser green, evergreen, whatever kind of dark green you've got. Black forest, did I see that already? I don't know. We're gonna go ahead and get the leaves. And I used a very small dot there, just next to nothing. It's right here. Oh wait, hair dryer. I really gotta hair dry this. Otherwise my, my, my blouse is definitely ruined. So we had some of the leaves in here. Go ahead and just, and if you don't, and again, if you're freehand in this, just draw yourself like three leaves, kind of in a little cluster here. We had one here, one here. And I'm using this kind of dark green that's not a super bright green. It's not got a ton of, it's more on the yellowy browny side for greens. I mean, it's still very green, but it's not like one of these blue, bright, crisp ultra happy, totally, you never see that color in nature kind of green. So this is more of a deep, a deep woods green. That's got more of the brown undertones versus the black shading, which I also appreciate. Okay. Oh, there's our, our three leaves. Now we're gonna go ahead and do one stem here, which, oh my gosh, I did that one so much better this time than last time my original draft <laughs> got the stem like all the way over here on the side <laughs> so yeah that's totally that's totally realistic we'll do just a little kind of pop going off of that and now he looks like a pumpkin maybe we'll just do a little stick that doesn't have leaves and then this guy will kind of find a spot in the center and all right that looks goofy but why not I'm gonna make that leaf bigger because that does look goofy. See, I freehanded it and I wasn't thinking. It's fine. That's all we need. It's good enough. So offload a little bit of that paint. And if you have some chartreuse still on your palette, grab it. If you need some more chartreuse, grab it. And we're gonna just kind of choose a spot on one side of the leaf and blend in just that one side of the leaf. Got a chartreuse. I'll do another one here. Now you guys can kind of see that. So I'm literally just taking one half of the leaf and blending the chartreuse. And because the paint is very wet, the darker paint is very wet, it's blending nicely so it doesn't look like I'm just drawing like a line on this leaf. It's giving me just kind of a nice multi-tone look. And I'm going to come in over that stem, not with a full stripe, but just kind of dipping and dotting across, across that stem. It's adding a little bit of highlight. We especially help it with this guy here. So the hope is that these sort of look like they've been plucked straight from the tree. And then maybe a little highlight in the base of the leaf there. All right, Insta peeps, can you see that? Oh, we just literally had the dark green and then we blended kind of where the top is, where we think the light would be. Um, or you kind of pick a side and just try to stay a little bit consistent with that best you can. Sometimes maybe add just a smidge more. That'll do the trick. That kind of gets us there. Good. So now we have some realistic ish 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 leaves kind of the hint at realistic. Offload your paint, give it a quick uh, quick rinse. Do we have some white still functional? I do. Okay, here we go. Actually, before we do that, I'm gonna go in with a black and then we'll come in with a white and I think we get to call it good. So just gonna kind of redraw some of my, my lines here. They'll show up much better now that we've, and you know, feel free to keep it loose. Keep it kind of funky, almost scribbly. And you don't have to exactly overlap your last line either. 
you, you can get away with murder with this one, right? It's very loose and free. We're here to have fun. Realism exactly is not kind of what we're going for. We're just trying to find us and feel a style. I'll rotate it around so I can see it. And if at times, you know, you kind of, you break your line or you even create extras that are right on top, that's okay. Oops. Oh, I guess I had a something going on over here. There we are. There we go. So now our black is happening. That's much better. There we go. Hey, Dab. Okay. I'm going to blow dry this real quick so we can come in with our white and do all the final touches. Do you know what? I see a thing I did on the last one that I really like, so we're going to do it here too. Grabbing the, the filbert real quick. I've still got some cherry blossom pink and hot pink. I'm going to grab kind of in the hot pink section. And I'm going to kind of do a little outline along this guy and just pull some hot pink out and away from this guy. In fact, I'm going to grab some more hot pink because I don't want too much white in it. I really just want the pure hot pink. Again, we're not going for full realism here. We're, we're having fun with color. We're playing. We're creating little spots of delight. So when you make that your rule, that you're trying to create spots of delight, you can get away with all sorts of fun things. And so as much as I've got all these other colors happening down here, I'm adding some hot pink to just get that little pow. And then just to keep it fun, I'm going to give this guy a little bit of hot pink. Just a little. It's maybe too much. Now this guy will lose some of his fluorescence as he dries. And so I don't feel like super crazy about adding fluorescent to the bottom of my oranges, which isn't even showing up on camera. What the heck? Right, right. Well, it shows up in person. And then maybe a little touch of the hot pink over here too. I don't know. Yeah. Just like that intensity there. That that helps. That helps a lot. Maybe a little bit right here. Just a touch. It's okay to be nonsensical. It doesn't have to doesn't have to make sense. If there's any like overly grayed out or faded zones you can add a little little something to it yeah that's something i noticed on the other version i did it as the original there was a couple spots where it's a little bit muddy and i never let it go and i just left it muddy and so as weird as that is the little bit of hot pink i like it and i think it makes it do what i want okay thank you for letting me get off track Go ahead, rinse dry, and now we're going for the white. And okay, so getting the white on the tip of your brush of your fine liner again, to the really small guy. Hey, hey, we're gonna kind of do like little sort of dots and broken lines and highlights kind of up and along. Whoops, there's my white paint. Shoot, can't even keep track of where it is. We don't want gesso for this. Um, it's just little dots and dips kind of along your sticks to add highlights. Because, you know, when you look at cherry blossom trees, the sticks are actually almost like a silver color. Ugh. Oh, boy. High pollen count today. It just hit me. Woo -wee. I was out in the garden earlier. Trying to clear out all the dead stuff from winter. 
because they say you're supposed to wait until it's like consistently over 50 degrees because you know butterflies and I guess it's not butterflies but you know their predecessors tend to overwinter in all the dead stalks of the things in your garden so I was like well okay well I can stand ugly a bit longer if it means that I'll get more butterflies and monarchs in my garden because I planted all the butterfly friendly flowers oops no 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 I don't want to oh, okay so you see how we're adding some highlights to those sticks and it just makes them kind of show up a little bit better. It makes them appear a little bit more vibrant, a little less flat. Um, you know, so if there's any kind of a joint area, a place where the stick really bends or, or dramatically changes directions, that's a great place to have some white. And we're not covering it fully. We're just kind of adding little bits when possible. Keep that white a little bit more to the top of the stick versus the bottom, but in the end, it doesn't really much matter. We're just kind of getting kind of random placements of this lightness. So this is a very detailed piece. Now, if you have a white paint pen, you could also come in with your white paint pen and kind of place some of this stuff. I guess you must have some kind of white paint pen if you joined me yesterday, huh? But if not, we're doing the brush method. So now the, this section is more is more filled in. Now to make the oranges a little bit more realistic. Now here's where a toothpick would also be kind of phenomenal, but it might drive you totally crazy. Those toothpicks or skewers have a nice consistent point on the end and you could literally place it in and then kind of place dots. But it means every single time you got a dip and dot, dip and dot. But we're kind of adding, oh, I guess you can do a couple. I'm trying to get a little bit of the almost pebbly looking skin of the orange. A little bit across the top. I'm trying to keep it in the lighter portions of the paint, so where the, the yellow is most strongly showing. Um, it's not perfect that's fine too and just for fun I'm gonna do kind of like a little little highlight streak like right here and here and well, kind of under that leaf you see what we did there just a little highlight just a little streak 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 of white boom done and then because the leaves tend to be glossy a little highlight streak here and there kind of where in the zones where you put the chartreuse. Can you see that okay? See the highlights here. Well, okay. there I go. Ugh. <laughs> Three cameras. Seems I can only ever please one at a time. And since we have that white out, we can do some of the highlights on the stems as well. I would go easy on those, but a few just kind of strategically placed is good adding a smidge more highlight on those oranges because i'm kind of feeling like the light is coming come kind of directly down okay, now we're going to add a little highlight to the vase and then you guess what you're done yes. so we're going to kind of get to the dry brush stage so create like a, a thin layer of woo, white paint on your palette so that you can then kind of drag little bits of white kind of on part of your your painting and i know this feels this feels like oh my gosh we just did all this work so i create kind of a thin white line right around kind of the edge of the vase vase whatever you want to call it doesn't have to be completely solid and little white kind of streaks that cover so we're saying our highlight is going to go kind of right down the center because we've got more of the shading on either the sides. That's where that sort of green and the, the pale blue are. 
So again, we're going to keep it light because we don't want to brush directly over this and cover it completely, but some sort of dry strokes to fade it. Maybe some of the texture of your surface is going to show through um, and create some striations in your paint. That's okay. You could even kind of do a little occasional stripe right on top of your blue. And I know it's sort of like, but I worked so hard to make it perfect. Yes, I know. I did too. You can add a little extra of that fresh white straight in the middle. Oh, well, mine has pink in it. How cool is that? Sorry. I'm going to just kind of keep coming down. Oh, I really got pink in it. Well, whatever. It's fine. A little bit of stripey stripe across here. And we'll notice it again as we get down to the details at the bottom. I have too much pink in my other stuff, so I'm grabbing some of my gesso. So the gesso also works for this if you have it. It doesn't really matter. So it's it's it doesn't show up from far away, but up close it does. It does show a bit. Here we go. Or it just has that appearance of gosh you guys are <laughs> so so wiggly waggly here. So it's very minor, like, but it's there. Yeah, a little bit here, yeah. And a smidge more on the edge. There we go, a couple, couple of lines that just kind of make sense here. Okay. I don't know about you, but I'm feeling like we have, we've done it. We've completed that art piece. Things are done, you guys. I hope you had fun. That one ended up being almost two hours of my apologies. So hopefully you able to stick with me. Um, you can go ahead and blow dry it and then maybe break out your pen and sign it. Um, I'll just write mine right, I don't know where, but sign it somewhere. You can use your white paint pen, your black paint pen. You can use your brush if you must. Oh, I don't really do, I don't do small letters very well with a brush though. Anyways, I hope you have a great night. I am so thankful that you joined me and tomorrow we will be doing, I think a simpler one. Again, it'll be similar style with the tree branch coming out and the blossoms in, in, a, in a larger and we're actually, I don't think I put on a supply list, but bring some Q-tips cause we could even do like this cool kind of Q-tip shape to get those, um, the blossoms done. I think it'll be a lot of fun. So anyways, I hope you guys have a great night. Again, thank you for joining me. We will see you again tomorrow at 6.30 p.m. for more cherry blossom awesomeness. And um, yeah, have a good one. Whoops. Bye. Oh my goodness, this thing isn't. Yeah, okay.